Hi everyone, and welcome to the first chapter of the Flutter Animations course. In this video, we're going to talk about a very simple animation, and we're going to lay the groundwork for rest of the chapters and rest of the videos, because we have to talk about trig trigonometry and also algebra in this uh, in this video. And I know that some of you maybe are already comfortable with this kind of uh, topic, but some of you may not be. And I'm going to also lay the groundwork for how animations work, how explicit implicit animations work and how transitions work. So this video is pretty much the foundation upon which all the other videos are going to be built. So I really suggest that you don't skip this video because we're going to talk about lots of lots of like trigonometry and uh, like how to draw points on a circle, angles, etc. canvas. Uh, so please don't skip this video uh, if you want to also be able to feel comfortable with the rest of the video. So I have a little bit of a new setup in this particular course, and that is because I need a little bit of a teaching assistant. And that is my iPad here that's sit sitting next to me. So sometimes I may have to actually move to the iPad screen in order uh, to mirror it on my screen so that I can show you some of the concepts in drawing. And that is going to look kind of like this. I'm going to just bring up, let me see if I can bring up my um, um, QuickTime here, you can see this is my iPad screen, so I can just draw on it with an Apple Pencil. So it's a lot easier for me to explain on this type of screen. Okay, so I'll just from time to time bring it on the screen like this. Okay, we also have a little bit of a GitHub repository in here. So let me just increase the size for the terminal. And you can see Git's remote V. So this is the GitHub repository, which I've already set up for us. So you can just go into my user on GitHub and then sort search for Flutter Animations public, uh, public. And you'll find the repository there. At the moment, there is nothing in it. Just, I think there is just a readme file, but we're going to create the first example. Before we do that, I'm just going to show you what we're going to develop. It's nothing exciting, really, but it just starts, starts us off uh, on the right path to creating explicit animations in Flutter. Okay, so let me just bring it up and you'll see it's a very simple animation. It's just one rectangle with a box shadow that is rotating uh, along its Y axis. Okay, and I'm going to explain all these axes soon for us. So don't worry about that. Okay, so in order in order to do this, let's just go ahead and first talk a little bit about axis canvas and a little bit about trigonometry as well. OK, so I'm just going to get rid of the animation from the screen and let's just go ahead to um, bring up my iPad screen. Uh, let's go and do it like this. And again, this is like the first time I'm also doing this with a little bit of a teaching uh, assistant. So um, let's just see if this is going to work. OK, there we go. So what we need to talk about is uh, our axes on the screen. So if you if you remember, like when we uh, talk about axis X and Y and Z in trigonometry, they're usually like this, like you this, this, the origin is here. And then we go up on the Y axis like this. And then we go to the right on the X axis. Okay. And then the Z axis is going from like the center of the screen into the screen. So if you imagine if a three dimensional, um, structure kind of like this. Okay, so like this, like this, like this, so this is kind of like a cube, your set axis goes from where you are, where you're looking into the screen. So this is your set axis. Okay. Now, when it comes to flutter, this is different, because um, your canvas is uh, kind of flipped. So if you if you know that like this is the center of the screen or actually I can't say center this is the origin so this is point zero zero and zero okay now in flutter point zero 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 is top left so it's here so your canvas start, starts on top left so you could basically say that the screen is flipped around or the canvas is flipped around its x axis because if this is the x axis like goes like this okay so this is and if you imagine an x axis right in the middle, like this, and you just flip this guy around on on top of the x axis. So basically, this point, which is right here, will then go on top, right? So it just flips around this point right here. Okay, so there's lots of drawings, let me just delete these. Okay. So now imagine that the canvas on Flutter starts here, the x goes like this, all right, and then y goes like this. Okay. So and also, of course, Z then goes into the screen. And again, just imagine this is a three dimensional structure. 
Okay, so it's difficult to draw it, but it just imagines a three dimensional structure. Okay, so Z always goes from the point that you're looking at into the screen. Okay, so that's how you create a three dimensional, uh, uh, how do you say, structure. Okay, so X, Y, Z, we've explained that. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, angles and our trigonometry that we were talking about. Now, uh, you saw that we have this kind of rectangle on the screen, which is rotating. Let me just bring it on top here, right? So this is our rectangle. So if you imagine there is an imaginary uh, line in the middle, and this thing is like rotating around that line, right? So it's literally rotating around its core on the Y axis or its center around the Y axis. And the reason I'm saying Y axis, because this line that we see in here, okay, it is the Y axis because it's going to top from top to bottom. So you could say that this line is parallel with the Y axis. Okay. Uh, and this, this is how we're going to do our rotation in this video. Okay. So let's also talk a little bit about angles, because I think this is very important. Uh, let me just undo all of these things that I just drew. Okay, so in normal trigonometry, when we have this, uh, the origin here, like at zero, zero, and then we go right on the x axis, and then up on the y axis, then if you have a point in the center of the screen, and then you're talking about a circle, for instance, with a radius of, let's just say, let's just say this point is zero, zero, and this point in here is zero point zero and one. So x is one, actually, sorry about that, it should be, it should be one and zero. So if we say x is uh, the first parameter, okay, so we say x has gone all the way to the right, and that is the maximum value of one and y is staying at zero. So we say y, y is one and zero, uh, sorry, y is zero, and the point is one and zero, then y in this case, in this case, y has the maximum value. So we say x is zero, right? Because x is staying where it is. So we say zero and one is that point. And then this point is where the maximum value of x and y are. Okay, so we say this point is one and one. All right, so that's our canvas. So the canvas starts in normal trigonometry, let's say zero and zero. And then let's just say the entire canvas is one and one. All right. Okay, because that's like the, our entire scale, and you can scale that by any value you want, 1000, 2000, whatever you want to. Let's say we're in the middle of the screen. So this point is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. All right, just like that. And also, I understand I'm not looking at my screen, I'm actually looking at my iPad screen. So I can understand if you're looking at my screen, this animation could be a little bit annoying. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. So you can just see the iPad screen. Okay. Now let's say that this is 0505. And then you start with a, you start drawing a circle whose radius is 0 0.5. Radius is half the diameter. So if you imagine a circle here, let's just say a circle, and this is a center, this is the radius from the center of the screen to the circumference of the circle. So this line, the outside line that you see in here is the circumference of the circle. So you need to know these terms because I'm going to refer to them uh, a lot in this Flutter animations course. So just remember that center of the screen is here. Okay. This is the radius usually written as R. And if you are talking about the diameter, it's basically twice the radius goes from here to here actually goes through the center. Okay, and that's the diameter like this. Okay. So this is usually like uh, how we refer to circles with a center and its radius. All right. So in this case, if we want to go back to our example, let me just remove these. In this example, if we want to go from the center, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to the maximum point to the right, it is basically, if you think about it, that, 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 that let's just draw some imaginary lines in here. Okay. So this distance that we just drew the radius is 0 0.5, right? Because it is half the X axis and X axis in its entirety is one in this scale in this canvas. So we have a radius equal to 0 0.5. So we say R is equal to 0 0.5. All right. And this is how we usually write 0 0.5 in Swedish, uh, but I understand in English, we say 0 0.5. All right. So uh, let's just keep it consistent. Uh, 0 0.5. That's our radius. Okay, so then we're on the circumference of the circle. And then we want to draw a circle. Okay, 
drawing a circle usually on this like when we're talking about trigonometry we usually draw a circle going this way all right so we just go like this and around okay and this is basically these are our angles so let's say at, at this point the angle in here is 90 degrees okay then we have an angle in here uh, which is also 90 degrees together these two are 180 degrees okay here is 45 degrees so 45 in here uh, and in here i believe it will be 135 degrees okay 90 45 is 135 then here we have 180 degrees so on and so forth so we just add 45 degrees to each one of these okay and believe me these are quite important because in one of the animations that we're going to do in this course is actually a very complicated animation we need to know about angles and how they work and why they work the way they work in flutter okay so this is usually the way it works in normal trigonometry so if i tell you that here is a circle Let's, let me just undo a lot of these drawings that I just did so that it's not so populated on the screen. Let's say that I tell you in normal trigonometry, hey, here's a circle. The center point is 0, 5, 0, 5, and the radius is 0, 5. Now draw a point on the circumference of the circle at an angle of 45 degrees. Then you'd say, okay, here's the angle. Let's just say we just make, make it up. Here's 45 degrees, okay? And then using the center, and the radius, then you can say, okay, so this line will end up here on the screen, okay? And then you say, okay, here's my line on the circumference. And the there is actually a, because you need the X and Y for this point on the circumference. How do you calculate that? There is a good, um, how do you say, formula for this. And X is equal to radius times cosine of the angle. The angle here okay and y is equal to radius times a sine of your angle all right we'll, we'll talk more about this but just remember this is a very important formula because whenever you want to draw a, a point on the circumference of a circle you need to use this formula all right so keep that in mind because in some of the examples we're actually going to like for instance uh we're going to say here's a center of the circle then draw a, a like a quarter of a circle basically an arc then you need to know this formula in order to draw all these points on the circumference okay so that's how usually it works in trigonometry so you have your the entire point of this is that the end and the center point or sorry the origin of your canvas is here is at the bottom left x grows to the right and y grows to the top all right so this is how it works in trigonometry However, when you go to Flutter, your origin is here. So it's kind of like someone said, hmm, there is an imaginary line in the middle. Flip this entire canvas on its head. All right. So what happens when you flip a canvas on an X axis in the middle? Well, everything gets horizontally mirrored. So let's just say what happens. Let's say in normal trigonometry, where we have the angle of zero degrees in here, 45 degrees in here, and then you have 90 degrees in here, okay? So these are our lines, okay? So zero degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees in here, here, and here, okay? So this is normal trigonometry. But what happens when we go to Flutter, where we have a flipped canvas on the x-axis in the middle what happens is that every point gets horizontally flipped so if you take this zero degrees which is right here and you flip it horizontally around the x-axis which is in the center well nothing happens it stays right there because flipping it on itself on itself it doesn't do anything however if you take this 45 degrees angle which is right here and then you flip it horizontally around this line in here then it gets flipped and it comes here Okay, so that will be your 45 degrees in flutter. Okay, then if you have your 90 degrees angle, which is right here, and you flip it horizontally around its head, then it comes all the way here. So then you have your 90 degrees in flutter right here. So you could say, basically, this is this is how I usually prefer to say it. In normal trigonometry, when you're talking about angles from zero to 90 degrees and any positive angle, you go counterclockwise this way okay 
uh, just and counterclockwise and clockwise you should know about that. i shouldn't have to explain that basically okay but in flutter when you're talking about positive angles you're going from this point at zero right here that i'm drawing this point you're going clockwise this way okay this way so this is the difference when we were talking about angles in trigonometry versus flutter because flutter's canvas is flipped on the x-axis and it's on top left it is right here instead of bottom left okay so let me just delete this note and delete like this so in flutter when we have x-axis going this way so this is our uh you could say this is our origin okay x-axis y-axis if i told you here is the center of a circle with a radius and let's just say x is uh one and this is uh, sorry this is one point one and zero and this is zero and one okay and this is zero point five zero point five like we have before if i tell you that here's the center of the circle with a radius of zero five then you will just go like this and then you draw a circle around right so in flutter if i tell you that draw a point on the circumference of the circle at the angle of 45 degrees you don't go here okay you go here that's 45 degrees this is 90 degrees 135 degrees 180 degrees and so on and so forth all the way back to 360 degrees okay now that is good i think we laid the foundation there but let's also talk about gradients versus uh, gradients versus degrees because when we were talking about angles we're probably just used to talking about uh, degrees okay but in flutter and pretty much everywhere else when we're talking about trigonometry we're not talking about degrees we're actually talking about gradients all right and gradients the way they work is that half of a circle so let me just get rid of all of these notations on the screen uh, like that this is pretty good okay let me just draw a circle here i i'm really not good at drawing circles okay actually quite okay i would say but not horrible um let's just go here and we say this is the center uh, I think I have to wipe a little bit this thing. Uh, there was a way to actually wipe. Okay, I think I, I can wipe now like this. I'm just going to move the center uh, of the circle to here. Okay, now let's say that uh, we're talking about degrees and we want to convert these to gradients the way trigonometry basically works. The way that works is that uh, you have a value which is a very important value and that is pi i think we draw it pretty much just like this okay and pi is equal to 3.14 what does that what does that even mean 3.14 okay so we're when we're talking about pi and angles we're talking about gradients we're not talking about degrees anymore the important thing for you to remember is that pi is 180 degrees so if you start here okay and you go clockwise this way like this if you say i'm gonna start at this point and i'm gonna draw points on a circle up until pi degrees then you're not talking about 45 you're not talking about 45 degrees or 90 degrees 135 you're actually talking about 180 degrees so going from zero to pi it covers half the circle okay so pi is 100 degrees just remember that and two pi let me just write it so pi is 180 degrees and uh, two pies is uh, 360 degrees so this is another uh, pi in here so pi two or two pies is 360 degrees okay so keep that also in mind because in a lot of cases when we're talking about angles we're only going to talk about pi all right i'm just going to say like three fourth of a pi or half a pi then if i tell you half a pi you should already know that it's 90 degrees okay right here actually in this entire thing basically all right i think i think that's that about uh wraps it up to be honest with you but i think what's very very important what trips a lot of developers up is that they don't know that flutter i mean the reason why flutters angles go clockwise and uh, trigonometry goes counterclockwise so this is trigonometry and this is flutter it goes this way okay and the reason is that a canvas a canvas is uh, 
origin is flipped around the x-axis so every angle gets flipped around so if if you take a clockwise a counterclockwise angle uh, movement to clockwise counter sorry if you take uh, trigonometry's uh, uh, counterclockwise movement which is goes which goes like this uh, and flip it around the x-axis well of course it's going to be clockwise so counterclockwise is opposite horizontal uh, dimension is basically your clockwise movement okay so just keep that in mind but I'll, I'll talk more about it don't worry about it we're, we're going to talk more about the uh, these things as we go on but i just thought to mention these things so that we don't get uh, shocked later when we get to drawing on the screen okay so let me just delete this so that we're prepared for the for the animation and I think right now I can basically stop with drawing on the screen and we can get rid of this little uh, uh, quick time screen and then continue with uh, our animation development so what we need to do as the first step is to go ahead and create a little project in our github repository so you could either create a github repository or you could just create a simple uh, flutter application on uh, on your computer it doesn't necessarily have to be inside a github repository okay so i'll go here and i say flutter create uh, exam and also something i needed to mention just ensure that you're on the latest uh, version of flutter as well so 370 is the latest version i don't think that there is a newer version i actually don't want to really upgrade because i upgraded about four actually it says five days ago and i think upgrading is a little bit of a headache right now in the middle of recording a course because it could require re restarting my entire setup so uh and by that, I mean Visual Studio Code and all those plugins, everything, everything basically. So I'm not going to do that, but ensure that you're in at least Flutter 3.7.0. OK, so let's say Flutter and I'm going to say create example one. And I'm going to say organization is X S E pixelity. And this is just something that I'm used to doing. You don't you shouldn't actually do this because this is my reverse domain. Yeah. So don't feed the organization uh, if you don't really want to have um, I mean, to be honest with you, okay, I do this simply because I don't want to have a headache with changing the bundle identifier and the application identifier in Android later. It's a lot easier with provision profiles on iOS if you actually feed your organization's reverse domain in the beginning of the creation of your project to Flutter than having to do this later by hand. So this is just a, a habit that I have, you could say, all right? So now that we have that out the way, let's go to example one like this and then i'm going to do some basic setups in here so the first thing is to change um workspace json and i'm going to say zoom level is five this is usually what i do in my courses uh, so that everyone even if you're on a mobile device can watch and now that that is out the way let's go to our um let's go to our main j uh, sorry main dart I've been doing a lot of node development lately. I just say JSON all the time. Uh, let's say uh, we go in here and I say FSA Flutter Scaffold Application. This is a custom, uh, a custom macro you could basically say, uh, okay? And it creates a simple uh, scaffold for me. But you can see it is a simple scaffold with a dark theme material application. All right, uh, and also it has a simple homepage with a scaffold and an app bar. Okay, just pretty much like what we saw in here, but we're pro probably going to remove the app bar soon. Okay, so FSA is Flutter Scaffold Application. And I actually have a video on YouTube about this. If you want to go check it out, how to create these custom uh, shortcuts in or macros in um, Visual Studio Code. All right, but nothing special. You can pause the video in here or you can check out the GitHub uh, link. Uh, and the link to that is at the bottom of this video, of course, on YouTube. And if you want to just grab the Flutter scaffold application without having to write it yourself, or you could just pause the video and have a look at it. Okay. So that's really good. We have that. Let me just say select device and I'm going to say iPhone 14 Pro Max. And also that is going to basically write itself on this application. So we're not going to be able to see this application anymore, but just have a look at this, how this thing actually is created so that we don't, we don't forget. It's a blue container and with a width and height of 100 points. And also it's rotating around its Y axis. Remember again, the, the, uh, basically not the center but the origin is here somewhere 
okay top left and x goes like this and y goes like this so it is rotating around the y-axis all right it's flipping on top of it on top of the y-axis basically in the middle all right so now that that is out the way let's just start developing our application all right so the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to uh, work with animation controller and uh, we're also going to talk about animations okay but what is an animation controller a lot of people get freaked out when we start talking about animation controllers and explicit animations but to remember animation controller is just an object that allows you to control the changes to a double value which is usually between zero and one all right so it's just zero and one uh, an animation controller can take it from zero to one with a given pace and that pace is specified using a duration so you say okay you have a value between zero and one uh, start this animation and go from zero to one uh, at the pace of three seconds so once three seconds is finished your value is one all right so that's all an animation controller does however usually when we're talking about animations then we're not just talking about animation controllers we're actually talking about animation objects okay and i'm, I'm going to talk more about this but what we need to do is just to have some sort of a continuous animation you can see that it just repeats all the time so this guy is rotating around the y-axis a full circle okay it's rotating 360 degrees around the uh, y-axis and then it's repeating that animation remember 360 degrees is two times pi all right so we don't want a value that goes from zero to one which is what animation controller does but we want a value that goes from zero to 360 or two times pi how do we do that can we actually feed animation controller with 360 and say oh don't go from zero to one but go from zero to 360 no we can't animation controller only does values between zero and one so what is the magic way of taking animation controller and saying don't go from zero to one go from zero to 360 360 well the answer to that is animation animation is an object that is tied to an animation controller and it changes its values based on the animation controller so if you say let's let me actually put a comment in here let's say that we have animation controller that has a value of 0, 0.0 up until uh, 1.0 in the middle is 0 0.5 all right and we want to say that 0, 0.0 is actually zero degrees okay and when animation controller is at one it should be 360 degrees so what is 0 0.5 well it is equal to 180 degrees okay so this is what animation controller does on the left hand side and on the right hand side is what we want to grab out of the animation controller so you could basically use a very simple formula if you want to and say whatever the animation controller gives me i'm gonna times it 360 so one multiplied by 360 is going to give us 360 zero multiplied by 360 is going to give us zero as uh, 0 0.5 multiplied by 360 is going to give us 180 okay so you could say i i just need an animation controller i actually don't need an animation or you could just be like me or and pretty much everyone else and say that animation controller is not enough for me i, I want to have an animation all right an animation ties itself basically the animation is the right part and animation controller is the left part animation ties itself to an animation controller and changes its values based on the changes to the animation controller okay so let's just keep this guy here and the first thing that we need to do in order to have an animation controller in our home page is to uh is actually are we even running this application i don't think so let's go in here and say select device i'm just going to run this application while we're talking about it so the first thing we need to do now is to change a stateless widget to a stateful a stateful widget and the reason for that is that animation controller needs to be disposed of once we're done with it and usually that is inside the dispose function of a stateful widget a stateless widget doesn't have in its state and uh, dispose therefore it's not the right place to have an animation controller i've seen some people having basically going really crazy with stateless widgets widgets because they think it's like a better variant of uh, widgets so they think like it's superior to stateful widgets and then they put your like their text editing controllers and animation controllers inside stateless widgets and never dispose of them that is a horrible thing to do because that is not being a good dart citizen 
if you're allocating these controllers, you need to also ensure that you're disposing of them. So change your stateless widgets to stateful widgets so you can dispose of your um, resources correctly. So let's just say convert to stateful widget. Okay, so that's the first step. Then let's go ahead and define a late property in here and I'll say late animation controller. And I'm just going to say this is a controller. Okay, good. How do we create this guy now? We need to talk a little bit about vsync okay and uh, actually before maybe before we do that we actually go and implement in its state so that you know what vsync and you basically get the idea of why i'm even talking about vsync so you see we say controller is an animation controller and there is a parameter called vsync uh, and that is giving us an error and vsync it needs to be an object that is of type ticker provider okay so what this really means, it comes basically down to refreshing the screen and how objects hang together. Let me just say it like this. Homepage is a widget. It is drawn on the screen at the refresh rate of your screen. Okay, so most screens these days are 60 hertz, meaning that they refresh their content 60 times per second. And some gaming screens, for, for instance, I have, I think it's an Asus or Asus screen, a uh, gaming screen, which I haven't used in a very long time. And it is a, I think 320 hertz, uh, if not 340 or 60. I don't remember exactly what it was in the 300 range. I think it was 320. One of the earliest screens that came with that refresh rate. And the higher the refresh rate, the faster your screen can draw contents. And some people can argue that the human eye can't really see the difference. I can definitely see the difference if, if you're playing, for instance, a, uh, a game like Counter-Strike. Um, then you can definitely see the difference if you play on a 320 hertz screen versus a 60 hertz screen. You're basically, you're going to be a lot more accurate uh, once you get used to higher refresh rates. Okay, some people really can't see the difference and that's okay. Uh, but just know that refresh rate is there and it is usually called a vertical sync because screens usually like refresh their content like this. They kind of like go left to right, left to right, top to bottom. Okay, so if they're going vertically down and, and it's th this is something that is just left there, vsync, I believe so. I think so. The reason it is called vsync is just because it's a vertical sync. You can actually read about vsync online. You can just go to Wikipedia if you want to learn about it, how screens work with the refresh uh, refresh rate. Okay. So going back to animation controller, what it says is that, okay, I am going to draw some things on the screen. I'm going to animate them, but who should I sync my animations with? Like which con which other content is writing on the display buffer? that I can sync my changes with. And it says, I need an object for that. I need to sync my changes with some object. And this object is our homepage state. So what we can do is to go ahead and extend this. And we say with single ticker provider state mix. And it's just, just a, you can go in here and can see it's a mix in. So we're basically bringing this mix in, mix in into our homepage state. And now this uh, parameter is quiet. Okay. You don't have to really know all about this, but I think if you're interested in it, you can go ahead and read a little bit about vsync, how that works, and also later look at the source code for single ticker provider statement mixing. Um, in some examples, we're actually going to use ticker provider state mixing, and then I will explain to you the difference between single ticker and ticker. Okay, but for now, just keep it as it is, single ticker provider state mixing, so you don't have to really think about it more. Okay, we've created the controller, but we also want an animation. We want an animation and that goes from zero to 360 degrees that is connected to the controller. So let's say late animation. And this animation is, is an object that can take another object from a starting point to an ending point. So you could either say, I'm going to animate an offset or I'm going to animate a double value. And in our case, we're going to go with the double value simply because we're going to go from zero to 360 degrees. And that value is a double. Okay, so we're going to say an animation of double, and then we're going to call it animation. Now that that is done, let's go ahead and create this animation. And we say animation is, and I don't want to actually take the GitHub Copilot's uh, uh, suggestions in here because I think it's important that we type this out ourselves. Okay, so what is an animation? An animation usually is an object that is linked to a controller. Okay, so one of the easiest objects that you can create for an animation is something called a tween. Okay, so tween, it simply means a value that is between, between, so read it like between, okay? So a tween is an object that goes from one value to the other. So let's say a tween, all right, we say it's a, it's a tween of double, 
and then it has two parameters it says where do you want to begin you want to begin at zero degrees and you want to end at what pi times two two times pi but we don't have pi and we need to import pi so let's say import uh, dart math and we could say show pi all right so now we have pi and then it's it's giving us an error simply because tween is not an animation remember an animation is an object that is linked to an animation controller so let's just say we want to animate our controller okay then the result of this animate function is an animation you can see all right so first create the between values and then you animate your controller using which you will get an animation back all right good that is done i can see our application is also running so let's go to the simulator you can see what we have a simple home page in here so let's get rid of the app bar so i'm going to remove the app bar from here boom okay so now that we have our tween then we have the right side in here okay zero to 360 degrees so let's remove this comment from here and what we're going to do is to go ahead and before we forget we go to dispose like this and before super dispose we're going to call controller dispose this is being a good dart citizen getting rid of that controller okay before we forget that is done i'm just gonna do a hot restart of our application and have a look at the terminal sorry the debug console we don't have any errors so we can get rid of that and our application is running fine in here as well so let's start by drawing that little container okay so i'm just going to say that we in the center we have uh, actually the body is a center and its child is a container with a width of 100 and height of 100 uh, height of 100 and its color is colors dot blue something like this and this can't be constant anymore i believe all right and then save these changes with the commas everything in place good now we have the container okay remember it had uh, some shadow so let's say we add decoration to this guy so we say it's a container with a decoration remember when you add a box decoration uh sorry um what is it called i think it's a box decoration right yeah uh, you can't then have a color so you have to remove this and then put it inside your decoration you can't have both a color and a decoration good now that we have that let's add a border radius so we say border radius and i believe we had a border radius of about 10 so let's say border radius and we say it's a circular radius of 10 all right and it's not const anymore so let's remove this const from there and then let's say box shadow and this is an array of box shadows so we say box shadow let's see what the default suggestion is so that i can fill in where it is getting things wrong and this is basically the code that i'd written before so this is really good i'm just going to keep it so let's go here and have a look at um, our uh, container and there we go so all that is remaining really is for us to start rotating the, this bad boy and now i'm going to introduce you to the one of the key components of every flutter application that uses animations and that guy is called a transform transform is a widget and transform allows you to do some really funky stuff with other widgets let me just show you let's go in in here and say container we want to wrap it with a widget and we say transform okay and in this guy then we say alignment center don't worry about it i'm going to explain this alignment center soon on the ipad screen just keep it as alignment center and then we're going to say transform and then let's just say that we say identity okay i'm going to explain that soon as well then i'm just going to say rotate uh, around let's just say the z-axis uh, by 0 0.1 degrees okay and like this all right i want to bring also the uh, simulator to the right hand side in here so we see the screen okay for those of us who are a little bit ocd and want to see the entire simulator i'm going to do that and by those of us who have ocd i mean me i'm just going to do it like this all right a little bit more to the left i would say this is the ocd part coming out you see um i'm just kidding and uh, so let's say rotate 0, 0.0 so what is happening in here i mean there's lots happening in here but i'll just explain you uh, you see if i change this you can see this rotating and do you see that it's rotating clockwise it is very important it's because the canvas is flipped on the x-axis this is the, the stuff that we explained before so i'm not going to explain it again okay so zero angle is here and then if we say uh, rotate by pi 
is going to rotate 180 degrees so you don't see any difference because rotating a rectangle 180 degrees is going to basically make an exact same rectangle if if it is a as a rectangle uh, with the same as uh, basically same width and height for all the sides basically okay good so what is happening in here let me just explain a little bit how transform works together with alignment alignment is very important okay so if you go in here let's let's actually do it like this i'm going to say 0 0.1 you can see that this guy is rotating on the z axis which is from the core uh, or from the screen into the screen so z axis and we're also saying alignment is in the center so in the center of this component rotated around the center okay what happens if i say alignment is top left oh my god what happened here so if i say 0, 0.0 okay 0 0.1 0.2 do you see how it is rotating around the top left as if someone was holding it with like a, it was pinching pinching this rectangle and keeping it in place from the top left corner you can, see, you can see as i change this it's like rotating around that point do you see actually let me just go slowly so we see what is exactly happening 0 0.5 0 0.7 you see it is literally as if someone is holding it with their fingers around the top left and is rotating around that okay so what i think would be really good if i brought up the ipad screen in here and just explain a little bit more what is happening on the screen so right there okay then i'm going to switch to the ipad let's just see if things work there we go so let's say that we have this re rectangle here okay and we want to say that alignment is center so when we say alignment is center uh, basically flutter says okay any rotation that you do is going to happen around this center point okay then we say okay rotate it around the z-axis which is a point that goes like into the screen okay so and uh, then it says okay i'm going to rotate it around this center point let's say that we want to rotate it like pi divided by 10 or something or whatever then it says okay then i'm just gonna say uh, it rotates around that point so it forms basically a circle around that point okay however if you say alignment is top left then it says aha so alignment is here top left then any movement that you do i'm gonna do around that point so it forms a circle around that point okay so it says okay now if you move this rectangle by uh, let's say pi divided by four basically 45 degrees then it's gonna like move this rectangle and pivot it around that point as i mentioned as if someone is like pinching that point and holding it so this rectangle is literally gonna move so this point is always gonna stay on the circumference of the circle so it's just gonna move like this so after some some time your rectangle is gonna end up being looking perhaps like this after you've done your rotation something like this but you get the point okay however uh, so so basically not however uh, so it is very important where you're putting that uh, alignment okay so i think actually alignment is a really weird word to explain a pivot point because that is a pivot point it has nothing to do with alignment it's i, I would say it's a poor name for the parameter uh, if if i could i would send a pull request to the flutter team and actually change the name of that parameter and deprecate alignment because i think it's actually quite weird way of explaining a pivot point however there is another parameter to a transform widget which is called uh, i believe offset a little bit better word or way of explaining and the way offset works is that it's a an instance of the offset class okay and it, you give it x and y so what it does it says okay by default i'm on top left my pivot point but how much do you want to offset this pivot point then you could say okay pivot like uh offset of 50 and 50 okay and since the width of this guy is 100 and height of this guy is also 100 the pivot point then shifts 50 50 and comes in the middle all right again remember everything happens from top left okay so if you want to give it an offset then you have to give it an offset that makes sense according to the width and height but if you don't want to do that if you don't want to give it like offset in pixels and points which is my recommendation that's not to do with offsets is to go with alignment because then if whatever the width and height of your container if you say alignment is center then flutter calculates the center for you so you don't have to you don't have to calculate it yourself 
All right. So let's go back now to the screen. I'll explain this a little bit more with offsets. Uh, let's go here and I'm just going to move around a little bit. So in here, you, instead of alignment, you could say offset and you could say offset is, uh, I believe actually it was called offset, wasn't it? Origin, sorry, it's not offset, it's called origin. And uh, you could say 50 and 50, all right? However, the problem with this approach is that if you then go and change the width and height of your container, then all of a sudden your origin is going to be wrong. You have to make sure that you update your origin as well. Like if you say 200 and 200, all of a sudden 50, 50 is going to end up in the top left uh, corner of your uh, so if you say if you go in here let's go back to the ipad i'm just going to delete this uh, design in here okay so originally your rectangle was this and a hundred and a hundred okay and then you said 50 and 50 so that was in the center 50 and 50 but all of a sudden you said no my rectangle is now 200 by 200 like this so 50 and 50 is going to be like this, right? So that's then your your pivot point is going to be completely wrong instead of being here. And that is the problem with using origin. So I suggest that you use alignment wherever you can, unless you need a very, very specific point in your canvas that you want to pivot on. OK, so but if your point is like top left or top right or center right, center left, bottom left, bottom right, you, you get the point. OK, if it's one of these like very distinct points where you can specify that using alignment, then please don't use origin. You can see there are lots of different alignments. OK, so we keep it as center and then you can see that we're rotating around the Z axis and uh, I also wanted to explain this identity. Matrix four identity is pretty much just saying like offset zero. Okay, so you're basically saying that no rotation, no translation, just reset the matrix. And after doing that, I want to apply a rotation around the Z axis on top of it. Okay, so that's what this transform is doing. Good. So now we got this transform. Let's just go ahead and do a little bit of a silly mistake in here and say that, okay, now that we have that, we want to apply our animation to it. So we say animation.value. All right, so, hmm, good. We've done that, but nothing is moving. Nothing is animating. So what's happening? Even though our animation uh, has a value, but nothing is happening. So you, you could say, oh, wait, because we haven't started the animation. And, and you could be right. Let's just say controller. We say controller dot repeat, okay? And repeat as a function that says, okay, go from start to end, which is zero to one, and then repeat the same thing again and again and again. So it's a never ending animation. Okay. So great. We have repeat, but wait a minute, nothing is happening. The reason behind nothing happening is that there is no widget in here that is accepting an animation. You see, nowhere are we telling this guy to animate this animation based on the controller. You could you could argue to say that hmm, but we've done it here let's actually put a comma here you could say we've hooked the animation to the controller and we're actually starting the controller but why isn't anything happening well the reason behind that is no one is actually re-rendering the content on the screen like no one is saying that even though the controller is changing its value or though the, the controller is changing its value every time it does that i have to redraw the screen and the way to do that is wrapping our widgets that are actually uh, rotating inside an animated builder. Okay, an anima animated builder takes animation, an animation or a series of animations, and then rebuilds its uh, child kind of, you could say. Not really child, because I think animated builder actually has a child, but it also has a builder function. So it calls a builder function every time those animating properties are changing. So let's just go ahead in here and identify which object needs to be animated. Well, it is a transform that contains a container, and it is this transform that requires uh, the rotation animation. So it is not the center, because this has no animation on itself. You don't want to animate a center widget. I mean, it has nothing to animate. It is this transform. So usually it's the transform that goes inside an animated builder. So let's say that we want to wrap this guy with a widget called animated builder. Okay. And then animated builder, you can see that it has a parameter uh, called uh, builder, I believe. And this inside this builder, you have to return the widget that has to animate. 
and that is this transform. So I'm just going to grab this transform from here and remove this and then say return this transform like this. OK, and then we have an error simply because the animation hasn't been provided. You can see animation. So we say animation animation and you could say but wait a minute what is all this animation stuff what was happening we said animation here and we have to say animation in here well what is happening is that this animation guy is hooked to the animation controller however this animation's value never changes unless the controller's value changes all right so what this animated builder is saying that says all right look i know you want to return something in here I know you want to return something in here whenever something else changes. And what is that something else? You have to feed it with animation. So whenever this list, I think this animation is actually a listenable of some sort. Yeah, it is a listenable. It says whenever this guy changes, I'm going to call the builder function. Then let's just say we pass the animation to it. So we say here's our animation, sorry, the controller. Whenever the controller's value changes, then call the builder and see what happens there we go so now our widget is rotating okay but it is rotating around the incorrect axis you see it is rotating around the z-axis which is the axis that is going from the screen into the screen so it's in the center as well so it makes sense that it is rotating around that okay so if you just change this around the y-axis then you can see that it is reaching the same effect that we wanted basically you can experiment with this you can say z x y let's just say x is going to look really strange but anyways uh rotate y as well actually x doesn't i mean it's not that that much more strange than y axis the one that looks the best i would say is the z axis but we're just going to keep it as rotating around the y axis for this example so that we can achieve what we set out to achieve from the beginning okay there you have it. So we have now our example. Our rectangle is rotating, rotating around the y axis uh, with a pivot point in a center, okay? Or the pivot line in this case around the center, okay? And then uh, the rest is very simple. The rest is really, really simple. Nothing to nothing to uh, contemplate really animation also you don't have to dispose of it it will be disposed of when this and with when this controller is disposed of okay so if you go in here and say animation dot dispose there's nothing in there for you to dispose of okay good so that was our first example let's go into the terminal and i'm just going to say git status and we're say git add all git commit example one all right and then i'm going to say git push there, there we have it. Okay, so I really hope that you enjoyed this uh, example and this particular video. I know there is lots of theory, but please ensure that you don't jump over the theories because in the other examples, we're going to get increasingly more, like the examples are going to get increasingly more complicated and I'm not going to explain the same concepts again. I'm just going to completely jump over them because we've already explained them in this video. Okay, so really hope that you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.